Vice Chair of the Needham Conservation Commission. I'd like to bring this meeting to order of the um, Thursday, February 20, 22nd, 25th, rather, 2021. Um, so there is um, a protocol now for how we open these meetings. And uh, so I'd like to run through the script and uh, if people would be prepared uh, when called upon to respond, that would be good. Um, all right, as a preliminary matter, this is Peter Olker's Conservation Commission Vice Chair. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Uh, Steve? I'm here. Allison? Here. Artie? Yay. Awesome. Um, staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Clay? Here. Deb? Here. Um, anticipated speaker on the agenda, please respond in the affirmative. And I understand that some people might not uh, have been able to come right now, but I will uh, look at the list here of people we have. Uh, Susan MacArthur? Here. Russ Brooks? Uh, he was going to be late, maybe? No, oh, he's here. here. Oh, Russ. Russ Brooks, OK. Um, Pete, am I pronouncing this name right? Uh, Zaitsev? I'm here. Tim Paris? I am here. Diane Simonelli? I am here. Fantastic. Uh, so that that should do that. All right. Um, so now I will uh, introduce people to the format for this evening. Good evening. This open meeting of the Town of Needham Con Conservation Commission is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020 due to the st current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings and as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. For this meeting, the Needham Conservation Commission is convening by Zoom app as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. The general public is allowed and encouraged to ask questions during the meeting when directed by the commission chair and through use of the raise hand feature associated with the Zoom meeting app. Those who have questions or comments regarding a particular hearing will be called upon in the order they raise their hand, so please be patient. All supporting materials have been provided to members of this body and are available on the Conservation Commission website. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless the chair notes otherwise. We are now turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. The chair will introduce each hearing on the agenda. I will introduce the applicant and or their consultant to begin the project presentation. After they conclude their presentation, the chair will go down the line of members, inviting each by name to provide any comment or questions. Please hold until your name is called. Further, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in, and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and please state your name before speaking. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by a roll call vote. All right, so that dispenses with the introductory material. So now let's indeed move on to the first hearing um, as is the practice during COVID-19, uh, we will take this not in any particular time order, uh, but um, through the advice of, of staff. Um, so Deb and Claire, is there one that makes sense to begin with? Um, 
but I would imagine uh, the RDA is probably going to be quicker than the NOI, so that's, that's probably a good one to start with. Okay, so let's begin there, and then uh, we'll move on. So, um, so I'm going to open the hearing for 317 Denham Avenue. It's a request for determination of applicability. Um, and Sue MacArthur is the consultant, Russ Brooks is the applicant. Um, so I wonder if you could talk us through um, what it is that you're planning to do. Hi there, um, my name is Susan MacArthur with MacArthur Environmental Consulting and also on the call is um, the homeowner applicant, Russ Brooks. Um, so the 0.23 acre lot is located at 317 Denham Ave, um, contains a two story single family home um, with a walkout basement, landscaped yard and a driveway that um, uh, runs alongside the property and circles toward the back. Um, would you mind if I shared my screen? Yes, please. Okay. Yes, do you mind? <laughs> <laughs> please share your screen. Is okay. if you're able, yes. Yeah, here we go. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. Um, so the driveway comes in like this. Here, this is the house. Uh, it kind of wraps around into the backyard. Um, and there is a perennial stream that is located just off property. It's um, called Alder Brook, and it is contained within a concrete channel so it's definitely been altered in the past um, this the bank of the stream was delineated in october um, and oh no i'm sorry in in december actually and um, there is no bvw associated with this stream um, the 25 foot this is the 25 foot buffer the 50 foot buffer locally regulated and the 100 foot buffer, the 200 foot riverfront area extends all the way you know, out into the road. So the entire lot is within the riverfront area. Um, so Russ would like to um, repave the driveway. Uh, right now it's kind of um, broken up in the back a little bit, so it's in rough shape. Um, he also would like to add this, um, it, it's a balcony, um, raised balcony off the back of the house. Um, it will have uh, two, we're expecting two um, 12 inch diameter footings, um, posts that will hold up the balcony, as well as um, a back door raised, a back door, um, like it'll come, there'll be a little deck and then 10 steps going down to the driveway. So um, both of these areas are uh, within existing pavement um, right now, and you know they'll just um, be proposed within pavement. Um, another feature there, uh, this is a front door, like um, concrete steps leading to the front door. Um, he's just gonna redo that uh, existing um, to be a portico as you walk in the front door. And um, that is the only work that is proposed um, within the 100 foot buffer. Well, the front door isn't, but, um, but all within existing previously um, disturbed areas. And I think that is all. Oh, uh, good. So, so really, this is just a matter of getting the erosion controls in and securing the area. Right. It's, yeah, and erosion controls we have proposed around the perimeter. Um, but it's all within previously disturbed. Yeah, uh, and, and or lawn or yeah. Um, right. Exactly. And um, according to the Wetlands Protection Act um, exemptions, three hundred and ten CMR ten point zero two two. Um, as well as the Needham Wetlands regulations. These are exempt activities. Exactly. Um, all right, very good. So um, Deborah Clay, do you have any uh, thoughts about this? Deb? 
Um, actually, I, I was out on site. Uh, I met with, with Russ on site earlier today. Um, I grabbed a couple photos if anybody would like to see them, but it, it does seem like a fairly straightforward project. Um, the driveway was in pretty rough condition. There were parts of it that kind of had, you know, um, deteriorated away. Um, for the most part, everything is in the previously disturbed areas and over, over the existing paved driveway area. So I, I would agree that these are all relatively minor, they're, they're minor activities and the, the project is very minor in nature. Very good. So I'll, I'll just ask commissioners in turn whether they have any comments, Steve? No comments. Artie? No. Allison? No. Uh, is there anyone in the audience? Um, there is uh, one raised hand. Looks like it's uh, Sheila Scott. I will allow you to talk. And if you could please just state your name, uh, you'll have to unmute yourself as well. <clears throat> Good evening. This is Sheila Scott. Um, I'm a neighbor and I'm wondering if the balcony is attached to the deck. Um, the balcony is attached to the deck. Um, well, the deck is the stair. I, I don't believe so. I think they're separate because the um, the side porch. Uh, well, Russ, why don't you? They are separate. They are separate. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> There's no stairs on the balcony. Okay. All right. Does that answer your question? Yep. And it's the existing driveway that is being redone over. Same, same yeah. footprint. Same yep. footprint. Very good. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, it sounds like we have enough information. Um, uh, would someone like to move to close the hearing? I move that we close the hearing for, um, I forget the address. 317 Denham Avenue. 317 Denham Avenue, thank you. I second. All in favor, uh, Steve? Aye. Artie? Aye. Allison? Aye. Me, I. All right. Very good. So uh, hearing is closed. We can probably go ahead and vote. Um, so we're looking for um, for a move to issue a, a negative determinant of applicability. I move that we issue a negative determination of applicability for 317 Dedham Avenue. Second. All in favor, Steve? Aye. Artie? Aye. Allison? Aye. Peter? Aye. All right, so very good. Uh, so in fact, we have a negative determination. Um, I think that should close things out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, do you wanna move right on to 94 Brookside or do you wanna take care of some of the other uh, uh, order and uh, certificate of compliance. Um, you might as well do Brookside. Okay, here we go then. All right, so I'd like to open the hearing for 94 Brookside Road, DEP file number 234861. This is a notice of intent. Uh, and we have um, also Sue MacArthur here to present this one, uh, applicant uh, Peter Zaitsev. Um, so tell us what you're planning. Um, if you don't mind, I will share my screen again. Please share your screen. Okay. All right, so let me zoom out here. Um, all right, so let me zoom a little bit in. Okay, um, again, my name is Susan MacArthur from MacArthur Environmental Consulting and um, the, I'm here with the homeowner applicant, um, maybe I should say property owner applicant, Peter um, Zitsev, as well as Tim Paris, who is the engineer for the project. Um, so um, back in October of, uh, let's see, 2020, I um, delineated the wetland resource areas at the site. The property is approximately 0.9 acres. Um, right now, there's just a foundation out here. The, um, the house 
burned down back in um, May of 2019. And so um, it's been basically abandoned the property for since that time. Um, there is a chain link fence um, around the foundation, you know, just for, for um, safety sake, so nobody falls in the hole. And then there's a, an outer chain link fence as well, just to, um, around the perimeter of the property. Um, Deb had uh, gone out there, there's too much snow um, to see the wetland line. So we're hoping that maybe she can get back out in a week or so if, if things um, continue to melt, hopefully. Um, but anyway, so the um, elevations at the, at the site range from about 100 um, uh, feet up by the roadway and gradually slopes down to um, the wetland at about 81 feet in the back here. Um, there is a large um, marsh, marshy area in the back. Um, and if you recall, um, I think a lot of the same members are on the commission where we did the uh, permitting for the next door neighbor proper, neighboring property last year. Um, I, I think it was around April. Um, so same wetland system. Um, and so the, this is the 25 foot buffer zone, extends onto the site, um, 50 foot buffer and the 100 foot. Um, as I said, the property has been vacant since that time. So there, uh, the area where the backyard was um, is overgrown with weeds and, and saplings are starting to come up and whatnot. But um, so the, the, um, proposed, um, the proposed plan is to construct a new house in um, a portion of the same footprint as the existing foundation, only it will be enlarged to um, extend toward the roadway and not toward the, um, the wetland, that, that's the plan. Um, also, in addition, um, they would like to keep uh, the chain link fence around the back. Um, obviously the one around the foundation will come out, but um, and we um, revised the plan recently to include this back deck. It was inadvertently left off the, the other plan, but um, we are proposing um, a 10 by 15 foot uh, wooden deck on 12 inch um, posts. There was a deck on the previous house and so they're, they're putting it back. Um, and, um, if you end up doing a site visit, which I'm not sure you will, maybe just Deb will, um, Deb, you'll see that there are some trees that were scorched um, pretty badly, some um, very close to where the, the proposed house is going. Um, so those we are proposing to remove. Um, some are, you know, die, are pretty much dead. Some are just, um, Kind of unsightly or it, in the process of dying. Um, so we are also proposing um, a stormwater management system um, and I will turn that over to Tim Paris to talk about but before I do I um, just want to add that we are proposing um, erosion trolls around the perimeter of the, um, the project we are also, um, you know, a few things to avoid, minimize, mitigate. So we're, we're extending toward the roadway, not toward the, the wetland, as I previously said. Um, there is some debris that um, I guess it was left over from the fire and, you know, some things on the property um, that is proposed to be taken out. Some metal, there's like an old, um, car <laughs> um, down down here. The was, was that uh, because of the fire or was that just dumped there at some point? I think it was even before Peter, you know, moved into the, um, the house, it, it was there from a previous owner. So 
Um, it looks like a kind of a antique type car. <laughs> um, so that will be removed, um, the body of the car. There's some cinder blocks and tires and wood and things like that. So the, that's all gonna be proposed to be removed. Um, in addition to um, uh, when we take those trees out, we are proposing to, to plant um, approximately six uh, trees, two inch caliper, um, and <coughs> along the back here, that back property line, um, two black cherries, um, one pin oak, one gray birch, um, and two crab apples. So native, all native species. And um, I think that's it. And I'm gonna turn it over to Tim if you're ready. And you can, uh, Tim has designed both the stormwater management as well as the septic for the, the site. Very good. Hi, um, Tim Paris. Uh, yes, as Sue said, we did uh, design uh, both the stormwater system and the septic for the new house. Um, the, the new septic will be up in the front, very close to the road. Um, pretty much the only place we could squeeze it in, meeting as many of the requirements of Title V as we could. Um, so that is, um, you know, right up along the front. It involves minimal grading. We had uh, pretty deep depth to groundwater. So um, we're not going to be mounting up over the system. There's just some uh, minimal grading to even it out above the system so that it doesn't have too much cover over it. Uh, the Because the house is being extended towards the front, we had to reshape the edge of the driveway a little bit just so that you'd be able to come in and swing into the front of the garage. Um, so a little bit of the driveway is, is extending, um, I guess, to the northeast <clears throat> a little bit, but the southern side of the driveway is basically staying where it was right along the top of that slope. The septic tank and a pump chamber will be on the side of the house. Um, again, it's kind of the only place we could put it. The only other choice would have been underneath the driveway, but um, then the sewer coming out of the house would have been had to been pumped up there anyway. So um, having the tank down at lower in the topography uh, made sense. And then we're pumping up to the system from there. Uh, around the back, we have the proposed infiltration system. Uh, the downspouts from the house would be connected to that. The system is, is four um, uh, storm tech chambers set in a crushed stone bed. Uh, it, for the smaller storms, pretty much all of the runoff from the roof will infiltrate within that. For very large storms, um, the 25 and the 100, there's a little bit of overflow that would come out from the downspouts. Um, but we are decreasing the flows in, in all the storms up to the 100. In the 100, there's a, it works out at tiny bit of an increase in the flow rate for a short period of time, but the overall volume is still decreasing because of all the infiltration that we have. Um, it was very good soils out there, very sandy soils, so that we're able to infiltrate quite a lot. Uh, so we really have no detrimental impact and quite a lot of recharge on the site uh, from, the, from the proposed system, from the proposed house. Um, right. Yeah, that's Excellent. pretty much it. Very good. Um, yeah, I, we're not sure if Janet's been able to look at the stormwater um, calculations there. So that's still an open question for us. Um, but um, what's the um, um, increase in impervious overall within the buffer? Within um, let's see, the new um, square footage of impervious is 3,130 uh, square feet. Okay. I, I believe, right, Tim? Yeah, oh. uh, yeah, I mean, I sent that summary over to you, Sue, but 
I yeah. can I can go back through and and look up the numbers. It's um, I don't think I broke it out for like what was in the buffer and not. Oh right, yeah. in the buffer. Um, but it's you can see it the the portion of house that's new is sort of has little cross hatching around the border. Yeah. So pretty much all of that, I mean, right in front of the garage, that was driveway already. So that's not new impervious. It's just shifted to roof. Got it. But that the square that, yeah, that Sue's tracing, that's pretty much all new impervious. And then over here. Right. But that used to be driveway anyway. All oh, right. Yeah. Okay, good. And then I, I just um, wanted to add that they're going to try to use the existing foundation, um, thinking that it it's still um, salvageable. And if they can do that, that's the plan rather than rip it out and, you know, pour a new one. So um, the one thing that I forgot to mention is the FEMA flood zone does extend um, you know, the wetlands back here, it does extend through the backyard. And um, so a small portion of this um, cham this infiltration chamber is proposed within it. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd, I'd like to point out, that's like not an, ele you know, there's no elevation associated with this. This is just a mapped um, area from the flood map. And it doesn't follow the contours at all. Yeah. And so when we did the neighboring lot, the flood zone was was out in the middle of the wetlands somewhere. And on this one, it somehow climbs up, uh, what's that, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you know, about 10 feet. Right. So regardless of gravity, somehow it's just moving. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm quite sure that the in actuality, the 100 year flood, you know, is somewhere around the the wetland line or a foot or two above it at most. So the in reality, you know, a hundred year flood in this wetland area is barely going to come within, if it even gets into the lawn area at all inside the chain link fence. Um, it's kind of doubtful. Okay. Useful to know. Um, all right. So uh, it does appear that there's a uh, a lot of information that because of snow, um, because of Janet not being here, we're, uh, we're still looking for. Um, but I'll continue the hearing and to try to collect as many questions as possible that hopefully by the next hearing we can, we can have them answered. It did sound like there was a, a site visit, a potential site visit here, um, possibly uh, out of concern of what the state of the backyard looks like right now, and as well as the state of the trees that are um, that are in that sort of ambiguous zone between uh, just being dead and ones that are uh, uh, hazards and mm -hmm. ones that may not be dead, they just look bad. Um, so um, I have some questions. I might... I'll, let the commissioner, the other commissioners, ask theirs first, and then uh, then move on to sort of what they have not covered. So, uh, start with Steve. Do you have any questions? Uh, no questions. Great. Artie, do you have any questions? Um, just just wanted to verify something. My understanding. My apologies if I missed something. That is. So, so the trees in the back of the lot within the 25 foot zone being planted there, um, they're being planted there. And that's, that's also down in the elevation. They're being planted there just to, so you can account for the, some other trees taken out. I mean, I realize that some of the trees coming out, the dead and so forth. Although I'm not sure about some of the trees towards the front of the lot, but they're being planted down there. Um, the value is having them planted down there. That's a question. That that's the way the value is, for example. Um, you know, so yeah, I guess uh, we can uh, just ask what yeah. the explanation was for planting them in a row at, at the edge of the property. Yeah, but again, it's downhill at the within the twenty five foot zone. Allison is, is. I mean, are you fine with what's going on there, for example? Well, um, I can't see this. The um, 
they talk about C table and I'd like to see the table. So it has to be moved over a tiny bit. Sorry. Um, I know you said that what, the, what they were, but I just want to look at it again. Yeah. So, okay. So pin elk and gray birch and crab apple and black cherry. So you have six trees. So it doesn't say how many are each. And they're all, um, I mean, the crab apples are quite different. I'm not even sure if that's made of, but that's all right. Um, there, there's crab apple that exists out there today, so we. Yeah. You, know, we you might you might want to you might want to combine the crab apples together. You might want to just think about aesthetically what that would look like. They have any mini mini mo in a row. It's yeah. not it's not it's not ours to say that. It's just but it's just we can't help it. Mm -hmm. And and I did and I did have one other comment about the chain link fence to remain. I think that it has to have six inches above the grade so that little animals can get through. And well, I, don't know I mean, do being a chain link, they, they can get through, even if it was- Not a turtle. Oh, uh, well, true, but oh. would you want a turtle? I mean- Oh yeah, we do, we would. <laughs> yeah. For sure, yeah. yeah. It's, it's actually required. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh -huh. so one of the tricky things about this particular plan is, uh, it seems to me, ambiguity about a number of different things one, and one being the the condition of the trees which then affects the number of trees that from our accounting practices will be considered uh in terms of replacing them so if you put down three if you take down three healthy trees uh within the buffer then we need you need to replant six so that seems what you're sort of counting on in terms of the healthy trees being taken down. Um, uh, but it's unclear yet whether that's true or not. I guess that's that's part of the, the, the question. Um, for me, I'm also very interested in knowing what's growing there now and, it, and in the process of planting these trees, what they're going to be with. Um, it looks like there was a history of lawn back there. there and because... Yeah. It, and but because of the um, uh, because it's basically been abandoned for two years, mm -hmm. that you have all this growth back there. So it's hard to know exactly. I mean, you can claim there may be a history of lawn, but I don't know exactly. You know, it's hard to know exactly what what was there uh, as well as as lawn. Um, um, but you say there's woody growth. In, in the narrative, there was woody growth that needed to remo be removed. Um, is that mostly glossy buckthorn or is there other other things in there? I can show you a, a few photos here. Um, this is the foundation. That's, you know, there's some lot. Um, here's one of the trees that's adjacent. There's an old chimney still. That's the one that on the plan is right next to the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is looking toward the street. Um, uh, there is erosion control up now. Um, but see this, just an example of some of the burned, you know, totally scorched trees. I, I don't really know what it looks like above. I can't remember, but um, it, you know, it might still be alive, I'm not sure. And this is looking, I can't, I don't know what the card were, but this is at looking towards the side, not towards the back of the property, but. No, it's looking toward the back. See the marsh in the back there? But there's marsh on both sides, right? I mean, there's marshes on one side and there's marshes, there's marshes in the back and there's marsh on the side. Um, it's more um, like a forest development on the side. Okay. Yeah. The large open marsh, I should say, is is straight in the back. Okay. And that's what we're looking for. Um, here is view of the rear of the property. I, I guess I didn't take any of just the lawn area, um, or at least I didn't include it, didn't include it in the plan. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think you probably realize that we're sensitive to anything that happens within the 25 foot and, and the idea that this was, uh, previously, previously disturbed area and so this would be some sort of redevelopment putting taking down yeah. things and putting putting things back in um 
there's certainly precedent for doing that. On the other hand, there's also precedent for us being a little bit more careful about what happens in that zone, even in cases where there's uh, a history of, of something there. And, and, and I think it makes it difficult in this case, particularly because there's been regrowth. So if, there's, if it's lawn and it's always been lawn, uh, what are you gonna do? But now that there's been some movement of growth in that area, um, I don't know, it just makes it a little bit more complicated. Um, it, it may be best if you go out and look at yeah. this. I mean, you'll see it's, it's mostly weeds, but um, I, I realize right now you can't see anything. You can't see yeah. Anything. And so, so, I mean, some of the options going forward is right now you um, have plans to just replant a lawn in that in that yeah. area yeah. and then that's the and then you're pulled back from the, the wetland line a little bit because then you have this row of trees uh that given the size of the lot they're not going to really be a, a fence but um but you do have a row of trees um uh there to sort of pull back from I mean, I understand that there's the there's a chain link fence, which is the barrier from the wetland itself. Um, mm -hmm. um, but you're right; it's hard to understand it without being there, particularly the conditions of the trees and the condition of the backyard, to know exactly what's going on. So you're right; this might be a case where a site visit is appropriate. Um, um, just let me say, there's not a lot of parking area. And <laughs> I think we've been on Brookside Road, yes. Yeah, right. it's very um, kind of, it's narrow, it's dangerous, um, it, especially with the snow. So I, I'm just calling Encourage people to carpool or wait till it, or the snow. Yeah, right, right. Um, yes. All right. Um, let's see. Any, any other commissioner? Anything come to mind from a commissioner? Um, one other question that I had was actually about the trees. Once again, this is a question whether these trees are, what the status of these trees are. Um, but um, they're right at the top of the slope. Is that right? Some of these trees that you're planning to remove? Um, well, some are. All right. So it says fire damaged trees to be removed. So we've got that one that I yeah. showed you right near the old chimney right there. Um, there's a little cluster of three here. Um, there's one, there's a, the two, I, this may be the two that we were looking at in that other photo. Okay, so that was that clump. Yeah, and then this one here. So, so and once again, there's snow, so it's hard to know what else is there. Um, would removing those trees, uh, have an impact on the stability of that slope? Um, um, I, I'd have to assess it. I, I can't say, uh, you know, off the top of my head, I'm not sure. Okay. I mean, we don't necessarily um, have to stump grind if they're, you know, if we just remove it um, and, you know, not disturb the ground. I mean, I think that's, Totally. Yeah, snag, snags yeah. are uh, always, rec I mean, we always uh, look for snags if possible. Um, so, I mean, well, I'm talking just, you know, cutting it to the ground, but leave the stump so that yeah. uh, there's no ground disturbance. Got it. Well, it is, it's in the 25 foot buffer as well. So snags might be appropriate. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Also, I might add, now that we're on the topic of trees, um, at the front, let me just show you, where the system, the septic system, or um, yeah, the septic system's going, um, there are uh, one, two, there's a few tree. Well, there, here's the 100 foot buffer. Yeah. So um, there's like one tree that has to come out within the buffer. Okay. Right, so I, I guess it depends on site visits, us uh, making a better determination of which trees are just sheer hazard dead trees and which ones aren't, and then we can do a final count if it's if if the if the number of healthy trees removed um, is over three, then we might need a additional trees planned to be planted in the back. Um, 
or elsewhere on the property. Um, all right. Uh, Deborah Clay, do you have any other comments? I, I had a couple questions. Um, oh. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, so in the narrative, you talk about a native lawn seed mix. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering what a native lawn seed mix is. Or what? Yeah, good question. Um, something that typically grows in the area, um, like a fescue or... Okay, so it's, it's a lawn mix. It's not so much um, native ground cover type of stuff. Right, right. Okay. Um, let me see. All right, so since you're proposing work in the 25 foot buffer zone, we have a formal waiver request. Um, I, I believe I included that in the... Um, I mean, I thought I did. You mentioned it in the cover letter, um, but in our bylaw, we have a whole series of questions that you need to answer and such. Okay, okay. so there's so, a separate form. Just a separate kind of guideline in our um, bylaw. So you'll need to have that um, for the next meeting or a week before the next meeting. Okay. Um, so the this property is already sold. Is that true? No, not yet. Um, there is um, a, an agreement underway, but um, it has not been transferred yet. That uh, is due to occur, I believe, in early March. Okay, because we're going to need um, to be able to follow up with the new owners um, to make sure that they understand what you know what their responsibilities will be because there will be a monitoring requirement when you put the plantings in and such so okay so we may need some kind of sign off if um you know if there is a new owner before this is issued yeah um, he's been in the process and he's well aware of um of uh you know the design as well as um you know what's being proposed and he he understands, um, I believe, so. Yeah, we've kind of been going with having something in writing, you know, with um, with situations like these. So we'll see if the commission is, is still interested in doing that. Okay. Uh, I think that's all I have. Uh, How long is the monitoring typically, is it, um, is it after planting? Yeah, so it'll start, um, we have a condition that we need to be told within 30 days of planting. Um, so we know when to start the mitigation um, monitoring. Yep. Um, so it'll be a two year monitoring. Two year, okay. All right, um, are there any questions from the audience? There are no raised hands. Oh, very good. Okay, so I, it looks... I put, I put my hand up, sorry. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, so so um, Peter is the current owner and he's on the, in the meeting as well, and I'm the proposed owner. Um, so I, I heard everything you said, Debbie. Oh, and good. Whatever you need in writing. Um, okay, great. Happy to do. Um, and Perfect. just, just, just on, the, on the chain link fence, it's, a, it's an older chain link fence. Um, it is definitely unsightly. We're happy to replaced with a fence which allows the turtles to get under and, and, and do that kind of stuff. And going to the other question about the trees, um, yeah, I, I'm happy to put them wherever you guys need them. They don't have to be in a row at the end of the garden. So that, that's my thoughts, obviously. I, I don't necessarily have standing at the moment. But, yeah, uh, I, if, you, if, you, if you have a lawn there, we would like the turtles to get in and lay their eggs there. Yeah, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm happy with turtles. I, I think that the original plan was that you know, it was a dog fence, so dogs couldn't get out and coyotes couldn't get in. Um, and I, I think that's what pretty much anyone's looking to do. Fence. Okay, thank you very much. And I, I'll probably, uh, all things going to, according to plan, the next meeting sh should be, uh, I should be the owner and, and, and Peter will be sleeping somewhere in the Bahamas. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> All right. Um, so um, I guess we can work out 
some of the details for our site visit later. Um, for now, do we have enough to continue the hearing? Anyone yeah. have any other questions? I mean, so it sounds like we need more information about the trees and the and the and the um, environment. We need um, we need the waiver form to be filled out um, for work within the twenty five uh, uh, no disturb zone. Um, there's also a waiver fee request that goes along with that. Um, we should have in writing some sort of letter. At some point, though, it uh, sounds like Mark is on board. So, um, and was there anything else that we're looking for? I don't think so. I th oh, I think Janet might have some comments about stormwater. Right. Um, that's, um... But that that remains to be seen. So that whatever whatever comments she'll she has, she might transmit before the next meeting or at the next meeting. Um, so, are we willing to? Uh, ready to continue this for two weeks. Does that make sense? Materials would have to come, the site visit and materials would have to come in within the next week for, for that to be workable. Do you think um, Janet would review yeah. um, prior to the next meeting so that we could address her comments or is, you wouldn't know that? I I don't know. I mean, uh, if, if she might I mean, I'll late. follow. <laughs> I'll follow up with Janet because um, I'm going to want her to listen to this um, portion of the meeting so that she can provide her comments and, and sign off on it at the next meeting. So I'll um, ask her to review the stormwater and then I'll send around a questionnaire to see when people can meet if, um, on the site. Okay, fantastic. All right. Uh, sounds like we're ready to move for continuation. Move that we continue the hearing for 94 Brookside Road until March 11th. Second. All right. All in favor. Steve? Aye. Allison? Aye. Artie? Aye. Peter? Aye. Um, so the, the hearing is continued. Uh, DP file number 234861 continued to March 11th. Thank Great. you very much. Thank you very much. Bye now. Bye bye. Bye. Bye bye. All right. So we have two other pieces of business on the agenda. Um, one is um, a continued approval of an order of conditions where we had closed a hearing on February 11th, um, but uh, we need to review the order uh, in order to approve it. Um, I guess we can do that last since that's really just us talking. Is there any one here to represent that for Diane. 30 Taylor Street, Diane? Yeah, I mean, if, if it's something that needs discussion, I'm definitely here for that, yep. Uh, Deb, was that something that we needed to talk about or is that because the hearing was closed? You're on mute, Deb. Deb, you're muted. <laughs> you're muted again, Deb. There all you go. right, all right. Okay. Um, so, what was, I have no idea. I just totally lost it. Um, well, Diane is here for both of them for the ah. COC as well. So yeah. I, I would also like to point out, I think that we have somebody in, in the attendance interested in, in reviewing the COC request as well. So I do believe we have, in addition to Diane, somebody who's interested in, in that piece of businesses. Okay, fantastic. So let's let's actually move to 130 South Street first. Uh, for the COC discussion. So uh, let me open the hearing on 130 South Street, DEV file number 234752, request for certificate of compliance. Uh, so this is um, a project uh, that had trees, replacing planters for trees that were removed. Diane, can you talk a little bit about uh, the sure, state of things? I, sure, and I do have a plan. I, I, I wonder if I can share the screen with you all? Please do. Okay, so um, 
here we have uh, a project on South Street. Um, South Street is here, the current home with the driveway that comes along the side. I do apologize for the pop-ups. We have a pool. Um, because of the time of the year that we were asked to do this, um, we could not do any delineation. So the, um, the line that we have here for the wetland is off of the GIS map. Um, but again, it's really irrelevant to the parcel. It's not something we're asking you to approve. Um, the trees were actually uh, down in the flood zone. So um, in the application, we provided you with the uh, invoice that the homeowner used uh, to purchase and had a company water and monitor the uh, seven trees that they put in. Um, again, we had uh, five trees that were somewhere between one and a half and two inch stem. And then there are two that were one inch stems, all of which were in, uh, in the back portion a lot within the, um, uh, Again, this wasn't our application at the beginning. So it's my understanding the disturbance was back in this portion of the lot because the plan was not provided at that, at that time. So um, with that, we do ask for um, the, the, min the modifications that we find in the order uh, was that there were to be monitoring reports. Uh, unfortunately, the homeowner had not done that. Um, she was looking, she's looking to sell the parcel and now this is when it comes to light that uh, monitoring was not done. Uh, additionally, there was some other method, uh, a less accurate method of locating the trees that was approved um, uh, for the COC, uh, but um, we put the plan together based on uh, a conventional survey, which is much more accurate. So the trees are then placed on the lot more accurately. Uh, so that is it. And with that, we do request the a certificate of compliance for the, these uh, restoration plantings. So these are definitely the trees that were planted were the ones. Yeah, that some of them still had tags on them. Yeah. Very, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I, other people might have comments about this too, though. I, I When people uh, disregard the monitoring reports, it does make us wonder why we require them to begin with if people are not going to comply with them and then we just go ahead and allow it to happen. Um, but that's a discussion that maybe uh, my fellow commissioners and I might want to have at some point. But for now, any questions on the commissioners? Uh, Steve? No questions. Allison? I don't recall if um, Diane said they were alive. Did you? <laughs> are the trees alive? Diane, they're, they're, are, they, are the trees alive? You said they're there, but are they yeah. alive? No, 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 they oh, are there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> did you say it? I couldn't, I, I don't remember. I know, you I didn't say they're alive. No, oh, okay. but they are. Yeah. They're all we alive. Yeah. So we have 100% survival. Is okay, correct. Good, good. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And again, if you look at the invoice, the homeowner actually paid uh, the person not only to plant them, but to come in and water them throughout a uh, certain time. Yeah, a couple, I think there were like three to five waterings that they came in and watered them. So there was some maintenance from uh, the person who installed them. Thank you. Uh, Artie, any questions? No, no, I think it's good. Yeah, so so um, I know we've had other uh, examples of this, um, but Deb, when people fail to follow through on the monitoring reports, what's typically our response? Um, am I muted or am I on? I can hear you. Okay, good. Um, it varies. I mean, oftentimes I think that we had monitoring on this because it was an enforcement. Um, generally speaking, I think if it's it's just a few trees that we don't necessarily usually have a monitoring period. Um, we have a lot of difficulty getting monitoring reports. Um, usually it, when people come, when they're looking for their COC and haven't done any monitoring reports, um, we usually make them do one um, in order to close out the permit. Um, so we eventually get a monitoring report, but we don't get the interim one. 
Um, mm. So usually we request one af after the first growing season and after the second growing season, which is also when they can submit for the COC. So the second um, monitoring report we usually get with the COC request. Um, it's kind of the one year one that we have a lot of trouble getting. Um, so generally we've just been accepting the um, report that comes in with the COC request. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is tricky. It, it is tricky to get compliance, um, particularly if there doesn't seem to be any penalty for not complying. Um, right. I mean, we can rewrite that special condition so that there, you know, is more gusto behind it. Okay. But for now, it seems to be the practice of uh, if they didn't monitor and the trees died, well, that's on them. Um, they're lucky they survived. I mean, right. Kind of. Yeah. yeah. Correct. Um, all right. Um, and there was a question. There's an audience member. Uh, does the audience member have a question? There is. There is a raised hand. Yes. Okay. Um, so I will go ahead and allow you to talk. If you could just uh, please state your name, and you'll have to unmute. Hey. Yeah. Hi. Um, my name is Joanna Candle, and I am the daughter of Lana Sokolov. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, this has got me a little emotional, but my mom hasn't been well for a very long time and passed away this January. Mm. So I'm going to just say she never really knew what was going on. And if something wasn't done when it was supposed to be done, it's because she just didn't really know. So she had depression issues. She had a lot of other issues. So she was a member, uh, you know, uh, she lived in Needham since 19, like 75, 73. And this is nothing, you know, I'm just saying like, I'm just trying to figure it out now. Mm. So, that's all. Okay. Well, I'm sorry for your loss. Yeah. Um, and 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 I think the practice is, uh, despite the non-compliance, it looks like these sorts of matters get sorted out anyway. So um, I don't well, think you I'm have to worry about that. I'm just gonna say to you guys that. also, like, um, she passed away almost three weeks ago. I'm trying to sell the house. Um, so this is also something that is gonna hold things up, and I'm not gonna. You know, I, I'm just going to let you know that. So, um, right. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Um, so we can um, move on to uh, a motion to issue a certificate of compliance. Move that we issue the certificate of compliance for what was the address, Deb? 130 South Street. 130. 130 South Street. Second. All in favor, Steve? Aye. Hardy? Aye. Allison? Aye. Peter? Aye. So we will, in fact, have approved uh, the certificate of compliance that, has, that will be issued, and, uh, and that should close that out. Okay, thank you. Who do you, you want me, so, Diane, do you want me to send it to you to be recorded? That would be perfect. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So 30 Taylor Street. So this is just an order that we didn't have at the time that we need to uh, look through and approve. Right. We had just got the DEP number the day of the meeting. So, mm -hmm. Clay? Just um, one thing. It looks like... Uh, um, Joanna has her hand raised again. I'm guessing I'm going to allow her to talk again. I oh, sure. Probably regarding where to mail the, the order. Um, we did have a conversation just uh, a couple hours prior to this meeting. Um, so if, if Joanna, if there's an, um, another place you want us to get mailed, uh, you can let us know tonight or we can also follow up. Yeah, tonight. Clay, thank you very much. I'm sorry I got emotional. This has all been a little bit difficult for me. But yes, um, I have a real estate lawyer. And I would love it if you guys could directly email whatever um, official. It's going to be something. It's going to be certified mail. 
Yeah, so wherever it needs to go, I would appreciate if it went to my lawyer who's helping me with the sale of the house. Okay. So I left um, you a message, Deb, earlier, and I, eventually I spoke to Clay, and he was so amazingly kind and grateful, and he said that you could do that probably for me. If Yeah, if as long as we have his contact information, that's fine. Okay, so if I contact Clay tomorrow and give him the contact information, that's where it needs to go to first. Okay. Yep. Okay, fantastic. Thank you guys very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Clay. You're welcome. Have a good evening. All right. Uh, so we don't have to open anything. We're just now. Uh, right. You're just going to vote to issue process. it after you review it. Yeah. So do, that's in the uh, in the packet. It's in the email. I sent you guys an email a short time ago with it attached. All right, so let's take a peek at that. Oh, Exhibit A, 30 Taylor, came through 705. I like it to be fresh. <laughs> <laughs> Not off the presses. Yeah, I can smell the ink on that. <laughs> uh yeah anything unusual in this i mean i think it was fairly straightforward i believe so yeah it is um i have the special condition in there um that we've been putting in for the pool projects to have the signage up um about the um emptying of the pool so that is on there um and then we have the um mitigation planting monitoring um with some hefty language in there. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it, it's pretty standard. They're outside the 50 foot buffer. Okay. Um, uh, do people want a moment just to peek at it? Or I'll give you a moment to peek at it. Nothing at all yellow highlighted. Sorry, I know Clay, Clay is really good at doing that. I failed. <laughs> but really the only kind of odd one was, was the pool. Was the pool. One. Yeah. That we'd ask them to, to make sure that it gets emptied properly. Right, correct. All right, uh, I will ask for a, a motion to approve the order. If you're ready. I move that we approve the order. I forget the address. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. 30 <laughs> Taylor Street. 30 Taylor Street. Thank you. Second. All in favor? Steve? Aye. Artie? Aye. Allison? Aye. Peter? Aye. All right. So that is now approved. Okay. So we're all set there. And that, if you would, Deb, send to me, um, and I can record that for the homeowner. Okay. Will All right, do. thank you. Good evening. Thank Good evening. you. You too. Okay. Bye bye. All right. So, uh, what's the status of now signing? So, do we still have things from last meeting to sign? Yeah, I was on vacation last week. Um, uh -huh, indeed. And, yes. Vacation. So then I was gonna set. I was gonna drop stuff off yesterday, but I figured, why well, make you go twice? And we have twenty-one days to issue, so I'm going to drop off everything tomorrow. I'm in in the afternoon tomorrow, so okay, I will so send by, you an email. Uh, so by tomorrow afternoon, it should be there ready to, to sign. Um, yes. And there's a small number of us, so we all have to be there to do this. Yeah, this time, yeah. <laughs> Artie. <laughs> I, have no, I have no idea what you're talking about, Deb. No I, I, I know, I know. I, I, don't, I, I don't like to get out of the house these days. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now that the snow is melted, it's going to be easier to pull over. On, on right. <laughs> um, right. And Janet needs to know that we're coming, I guess. And she's not at the meeting tonight. Um, <laughs> but, mm. um, exactly. And I'll then touch the, base with her. The other, the other uh, piece of business was to put together a site visit um, for this property. Uh, this would have to be sometime next week or any time before the meeting. 
This has to be before the meeting, but the earlier the better in case you have questions that we need to get to them. Um, so do you think the snow cover, I mean, it's done a pretty good job around here of going away. I'm not sure in that area. Well, I'm going to need them tomorrow. I was in the office yesterday, so I went by and I wasn't comfortable reviewing it at that point. Um, we have had some melting today, so I'll try again tomorrow. Okay. Um, but I, you know, I don't come to need them every day anymore, so. Um, but I'll see how it looks tomorrow. All right, we just have to catch it before it snows again. God yes, forbid. it's not gonna snow again. <laughs> It's not. Eddie Olson going? told me that winter oh. is over. So we're good. Well, that's good. Yeah. Um, and uh, some of you went out and did a site visit on the um, construction project on Highland? That would be me and Janet and Bill. Okay. So actually, Get people are here. Yeah. So it was, it was just the three of us and, um, mass DOT and the contractor. Um, so Janet asked a lot of good questions. Um, we still have to have a pre-construction meeting. So, um, they wanted to remove the trees before putting erosion controls in, mm. but it's a pretty steep slope where they're building this, um, this basin. So um, they were gonna try to reconfigure things so they could get the erosion control in. They were waiting for the DEP sign to be delivered. And so they're supposed to get in touch with me before they do anything um, to do the pre-construction okay. thing. All right, well, good, so, we'll look forward to but that. But it went well, it was, it was helpful. Excellent. Yeah. All right, uh, anything else? Mm, not that I can think of offhand. Well, I I suppose I could entertain then uh, a motion to adjourn. That would be entertaining. So moved. Second. Uh, I'll. There's so few of us. I'll actually go around. Steve. Hi. <laughs> Allison. Hi. Artie. I don't. Peter. Know. Maybe uh yeah exactly i know if Artie and i hold out we're we're gonna uh, hold <laughs> yeah no, I'm, really <laughs> i'm gonna say i and and uh, the eyes have it so um uh meeting adjourned uh when is the next meeting the next meeting is march 11th march. yeah all right it is see you okay. all there all right and or Thanks, Janet's guys. garage so i'll send out an email about figuring out when we're going to do our our site visit okay Fantastic. Thank you. All guys. right. Bye, everybody. Bye, bye. Bye-bye.